Hi everyone, welcome back to Get Soft Talk. Um, well, today's a very kind of somber episode because, yeah, in case you haven't heard, our main um, host, Luis Cerda, passed away recently on September 19th. Um, yeah, so this is a tribute episode to him. And we have on our show Evelyn Gallegos, who you heard in the second episode. She was our first guest. So welcome back, Evelyn. Thank you for having me. Yeah, thank you for being here. Um, yeah, it was a um, it was a great loss that we had recently, huh? Well, definitely, I think uh, most of us haven't processed yet. Yeah, it's yeah. taking a while. I think for all of us, especially as family. Definitely. Um, I guess the uh, the best thing that we could do is just uh, you know keep him alive in our memories and. How we remember him. Exactly. And that's kind of why I wanted to bring someone else that knew him on the show today so we could, um, I guess, remember him and talk about like some of the memories and how he is and just remember all the good times we had with him. And um, yeah, because he was a really awesome person. And I mean, he could, yeah, he could be a little argumentative, I guess, but <laughs> but he, he was a really great person. Yeah, he definitely was a very... Uh, special individual for each and every one of us that got to meet him i think everybody has a, a special type of bond with him if you really sat down and talked to him and spent time with him yeah exactly like it was kind of crazy he could like almost reach into your soul in a way and like lay your whole life out and um i guess just tell you how you are who you are he was, he was a really interesting guy I think uh, for the most part, he was just very open and willing to talk to anybody and meet people from different walks of life. Um, yeah, I think that's how I met because <laughs> we met through Facebook. <laughs> yeah, you guys met through Facebook and then, um, well, you guys had a, a different type of relationship than most people. Like We didn't need to touch that. So. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> but yeah, um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, for X, Y, Z reason, you know, you kind of drift a little bit apart, but I don't think we ever stopped um, caring for each other as friends. So I think I, I honor that and I cherish that a lot. Hell yeah, hell yeah. Yeah, he really he really cared for you too. And even though uh, he could be a little, uh, <laughs> <laughs> a little mean sometimes, but he, he really did care. Yeah, definitely. So just wondering, how did you guys meet? I think you told me. Um, well, we had a mutual but, friend, um, Celia. Okay. And we met through, like, kind of, it was like the activist crowd in, in El Paso, the movement people, I guess you could, okay. you could call them. And then, um, yeah, we just, um, I guess we hung out one day. Um, Celia had invited me over and he was over and we were all, um, you know, partaking in uh, adult um recreation activities that, that's not legal in texas but that's legal in um other states <laughs> yeah so um and i didn't have any on me that day so i was kind of a moocher and um louis saw that i guess that's what you call me i was the the moocher of the day because i didn't have any on me and um <laughs> louis saw that and so we all had our little session we're all relaxing and then he just uh he got the idea to go to pizza joint and then, um, so we're like, yeah, yeah, let's go. And then we thought we were all going to go into his car, but he looked at me and he's like, nah, I don't want him in my car. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Cause like, cause he didn't like me because I was a little moocher. I didn't have anything to give. And he's like, yeah, I don't want this guy doesn't have a car. He doesn't have like no fun. Like what the hell? Like, nah, I don't want him in my car. <laughs> and I didn't understand that. So I was just like, oh, I don't know why. So me and John, um, our other friend, John, we went into another car and went to pizza joint. But then, so that was our introduction. But then the next time we met, like, I brought, I had, um, for our recreational activities, I had, <laughs> <laughs> I had some on me. So, um, he saw that and, um, I guess from there on, like, we just started talking more. And so he opened up a little more to me. And so we started talking and then from there, we just really hit it off. And apparently every time, like, Sally would have him over, he would always ask for me, like, Oh. Like, he would always ask, like, hey, where's your buddy Esteban at? Like, bring him over. And so, yeah, he told me that. And so we became really close friends. And then we started hanging out, like, by ourselves without Salia, like, around two. And then, 
I don't know. It's just really interesting. Like, how close we got, like, really fast. It almost like we were, like, well, we knew each other, like, <laughs> our whole lives. And we became, like, brothers, like, because we would oh. fight all the time and hang out all the time. Yeah. But, like, five minutes later, we would be, like, laughing and enjoying ourselves, listening Definitely. to music and stuff. So, I don't know. It was, a, it was a really special bond, I think. That's awesome. I think that's kind of, um, I met you through him, of course. Um, but I remember the first time that I met you was on a date that we had gone. I don't know if you remember. Oh, yeah. You were at John's apartment. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that. Yeah. With interesting date. <laughs> <laughs> Where'd you guys go? We had gone. <laughs> it was, well, it was my idea. We had gone to um, Viva El Paso because they had uh, opened up, you know. And so I thought, well, this would be neat, you know, to go and see. Um, Viva El Paso is not what it was when I was a child. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, man, it was kind of funny because we were, you know, sitting watching uh, the the theater and whatever. And uh, <laughs> Luis just had a way of poking fun at things that he <laughs> noticed. <laughs> so, I mean... It was funny, but, you know, at the same time, I was like, shit, this guy can't, you know, be serious about anything. But um, I guess that's what was special about him. He would pick out things that nobody else would catch. Yeah. How and, did he um, do for that? Yeah. And, what uh, was it that he saw that made him, like, <laughs> that made him, uh, like, well, laugh? It's because, well, there is pretty much, uh, for people that don't know, um, Viva El Paso pretty much is just a reenactment of how um, the Spaniards came to the Americas and they call, well, colonized, I guess, in a sense, and uh, the background of El Paso, the indigenous people that lived here, blah, blah, blah. So then uh, there was this uh, conquistadores, I guess, that were, you know, the, the actors that were dressed up. And there was this uh, guy... Uh, African American, and he was dressed as a conquistador. Yeah. So historically, that's not accurate. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but I guess you know uh, what I didn't know is that supposedly um, Viva El Paso sometimes has like uh, volunteer students from UTEP. I don't know if from theater or from what, but this guy was tall. Like he was huge. I even thought like this could possibly be like a football player. <laughs> Yeah, he was just a really big guy. <laughs> yeah, doing hours at Viva El Paso. You know? <laughs> and so we started laughing because they do this um, dance called the uh, uh, Baile de los uh, Cuchillos. I don't know if you've ever seen yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. They have like the these knife. machetes. Yeah, so like they, they oh. yeah, they dress into like their necks get up and they look like, you know, uh, campesino type workers. And yeah. so this African American guy was dressed like that, and so he started laughing, and I was like, "What the hell are you laughing at?" <laughs> you know. And then he goes, "Look at him! Look at him as he's dancing. He's gonna break out in a crip walk." Fucking <laughs> 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 I was like, "Shit!" And I couldn't stop laughing because, like, you had I had like parents and kids around us. <laughs> could be a little inappropriate at times, but man, it was funny. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, shit. I, well, I felt a little bit foolish because I was like, damn, like I feel stupid. <laughs> but I mean, I didn't know, you know, Viva El Paso isn't what it was. You know, a couple years back when I was a child, when I saw it, they had this big uh, show. They even had like these uh, cannons that they would blast. Oh, and shit, yeah, yeah, it was crazy. Yeah, it was fun. They had like uh, folklorico dancers. It was, and they had a, kind of like a, a drama type plot it, it, and it and it was very interesting to watch and yeah. just the fact that it's in McKellican Canyon and, and you know how it's how the setup is in the theater it's it's amazing but um yeah it's not what it used to be <laughs> so it's, yeah it used to be yeah. nice and now it's kind of like a looks almost like a little kids production or something <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah sorry sorry guys who yeah. work at Viva El Paso it, might want to pick up your act. <laughs> <laughs> Not to be mean, yeah, yeah. but yeah, but um, yeah, Luis had a knack for like just like poking fun at everything too, and 
like you said, picking up on random things and creating little scenarios in his head. Like, but I think that was his, like, his Asperger's, you know? Like, so yeah, so there's a reason. He was very appropriate, guys, sometimes, but he, he had Asperger's. So that's sorry, that's I'm giving him like a, a free pass. A free pass for some of the things he would say. Yeah. But yeah. Th- those are the one of the memories I think the fondest that I had of him. First impressions are anything, right? And first date, and, and just the first impression of him is like, damn. <laughs> <laughs> it's like I don't know what I'm doing here. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it was it was a fun night because then of course I met you and you know John and uh, his girlfriend, I Edis Isis. Iris Isis. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a different name you don't hear often. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. Fond memories of him. Yeah, yeah, he's a cool guy. Oh man. Nah, and he was uh, not only was he like funny though, he was like smart and like yeah. really smart. Like I think like almost on a genius level. Like I don't know if he ever told you, but he was also he before um before he got like a wound that t- that he dropped out of school for, um he was going to school for engineering and um yeah. like he actually got pit like before that, he was in anthropology, and he was just going to do, like, anthropology, but the engineering department personally contacted him, like, and said, like, yo, you should come over here. We see that your math grades are badass, and we see that your other grades are so-so. Nah, you're an engineer. You need to come over here. So they, like, yeah. they handpicked at him, and they saw him, and he worked on, like, so his math was really good, and he would always surprise teachers, but I know um, he worked on some mathematics for um neutrinos like some guy approached him to help him with some mathematics on mm-hmm. um to see if um uh, some particles were shown during a um an experiment mm-hmm. and so he luis was res- uh, helping out with the mathematic portion of it the other guy was just i guess responsible for the scenario and putting out the paper but luis was helping out a lot with the mathematics and mm-hmm. i mean that requires a lot of intelligence to do definitely and, and he wasn't even graduated yet so mm-hmm. and he was approached by i mean someone working on a paper like that it's got to be a grad student so he was approached by a grad student to help out so yeah i think that's one of the things that i admire about him a lot uh his level of intelligence um even though you know sometimes Everything that he would try to explain, it all always had to be with logic. Oh, and I, yeah. yeah, and I think uh, that's very different nowadays because everybody's, I don't know, more about um, acting in the moment. But I think he was very much different in that aspect. No, yeah. I know. He taught me a lot in that aspect. Like, I never. I didn't know how to think properly. Like, you know, I was so in, <laughs> like, in my own little cloud, like in my little world, my own reality. It was, not making sense i would without um going job for job like little cheap jobs where i get like paid (laughs) seven twenty five an hour and then i'll quit like in two weeks you know like without purpose not didn't have my own apartment didn't have a car didn't have anything and Mm -hmm. and he helped me like become more logical and like he would straight up tell me like like things like yo bro you need to work on this you need to get a good job and stop moving like job i mean he would tell me like more mean he wouldn't be like nice like how i'm talking about like he would put it in luis way like get away like if he cared about you he would really tell you straight up like yo man i think you're fucking up you need to yeah do this shit he stopped me from being like an alcoholic too because <laughs> that's a funny story too like one time i was um staying in this little cheap apartment in central with these um with these crazy that's another story. Me and Luis mm-hmm. had some good experiences at that apartment. Some fun experiences at the apartment too with these crazy um nudist lesbian chicks <laughs> that I had roommate that I, that I was rooming with at the time. <laughs> we, you told me a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we have some funny experiences in that apartment. That was I guess that was the beginning of our friendship too. And that's probably why he wanted to hang out with me a lot too. I gotta I, save this fucker. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, also because there was, like, naked lesbian chicks walking around in my apartment. So I think that was a big reason he wanted to hang out in that apartment. I, He's I, like, no big deal. They're like, guys. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, but um, anyway, what, back to the main story about that apartment is, um, yeah, he saved me from becoming an alcoholic because one day he came over. It was, like, 10 in the morning. And so I was like, yo, bro, um, he was going to go to class and he came to visit me so we could smoke. And... 
yeah sorry guys that's what the recreational activity was it's um it's marijuana it's not it's not like meth or anything so don't worry guys <laughs> but anyway we're gonna smoke and then um i asked hey man you want a beer and he's like what the hell man it's 10 in the morning i was like and then i went and grabbed one and opened it's like whoa man you're drinking already and i was like yeah it's probably my second one <laughs> And then he's like, damn, dude, you're an alcoholic, bro. And I was like, what? I was like, nah, I'm not an alcoholic, man. It's my day off. And yeah, and yeah that made me realize I was an alcoholic. Because who like, who's going to drink at 10 in the morning on a Tuesday? You know? Yeah. Like, crazy alcoholic, man. <laughs> yeah, my poor liver. Probably still recovering from those days. <laughs> but yeah, he saved me. He made me like, no one ever told me that, you know? Like. I mean, I'm sure I hung out with a lot of people and would do crazy shit like that, but no one would say anything and be straight up. Stop you on your tracks and be like, yo. Yeah. That's yeah. Bad. So I think that's one thing that a lot of people appreciate from him is that he was very forward about, you know, if he saw something that he could give you advice on. And well, like you mentioned, it wasn't always what you wanted to hear, but it's probably what you needed to hear at the time. Exactly. Mm hmm. And like he would always say, like people would get angry at him for saying these things, but it's like he would always say, well, if you're getting angry, it's either it's there's got to be truth to it. It's like, if it's not true, you shouldn't be getting angry. And rem- he would always say that. Yeah, I remember he would go, oh, "Stop me when I lie," <laughs> and that would make me even more angry. I was like, you ass! <laughs> Hell yeah! <laughs> oh. Yeah. I need to take some psychology classes too so that like he was basically like a mini psychologist so I guess that's why he would be able to do that I think in his little you know intelligent little brain like you would try to fuck with people just a little for his own shits and giggles yeah I mean that was that I mean not with honest, ill he, intent but just to you know I yeah. guess to get a laugh yeah he was known <laughs> to do little thought experiences thought experiments on people like totally he, i mean he was a really like i said he's a really intelligent guy and intelligent people do especially G- people at that level kind of do kind of crazy kind of things that would be kind of messed up to other people but i mean it's just part of the process he has yeah. he had a brilliant mind <laughs> it's all in good fun exactly there was no <laughs> ill will to you know to yeah. that but exactly mm-hmm. like um like that way he he was able to find out how I um I had a stuttering problem because I when I was little I went to speech therapy classes cuz I had a really bad um well obviously speech problem. Yeah. <laughs> so I had to go to speech therapy classes and I got really better with that and also a theater really helped me too cuz there's a lot of vocal exercises you have to do so and articulation so you get really good at vocalizing and so yeah. I thought I was good with my speech and stuff and I thought I was fine but then Luis would notice like just something in the way I would talk, like something was off. And then he found it one day and he, he saw me like stutter once. And then he was like, you're a stutterer. And then from then <laughs> on, like it kept, he would like poke fun at it and like kind of like, and, the, and then it came back really bad, like for a couple of years. And then, yeah. But you know what? He would, <laughs> he would give us nicknames. <laughs> Yours oh, was the true. light bulb. Light bulb. He never called you light bulb. <laughs> Not to my <laughs> pet, no. Why light bulb? I have no idea because it would take you like, he says like you guys would be talking and then you would state the obvious like a minute later. <laughs> so he's like his little brain and he's like a light bulb. Like it takes him a while to turn on, but you know, once it gets going, boom, light bulb. <laughs> yeah, I guess that is a good way to describe my brain, man, because I am a kind of man, I kind of am kind of slow in that regard it takes me a minute to understand to process things <laughs> i have like a like a 1980s computer while everyone else has like a modern computer so you could dial up slow. <laughs> hell yeah so it takes me a while guys i gotta admit <laughs> stupid uh, what was your nickname you <laughs> you're like you're not gonna roast me on this shit. <laughs> <laughs> mine was chonchis remember <laughs> i louise yeah i remember i'm going Twenties, yeah. yeah. Square footage. <laughs> Didn't you know he did that? <laughs> yeah. 
he got so mad that even his dad once called her, called him, like, called um, Evelyn Tronchi's, like, yeah. like, hey, where's Tronchi? You did like, too. Yeah, you I did, did too. too. I got you. <laughs> I was like, oh, hell no. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Yeah, just because no. when we were talking about you, like, you would always mention it. Hey, is Tronchi's coming over today? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Hi, Louise. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but those nicknames would stick. <laughs> at his service the the friend of his mom's she says that he would call her impetuda in something like that i don't remember but so probably remember. <laughs> i was trying to look up what that meant which means impetuous <laughs> like a moving force <laughs> I, was like, I wonder why Where he did called he get that? these names <laughs> i have no idea yeah, he really liked words and like he would use them and he would create his own definitions for things. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, he's a funny guy. Oh, yeah. man. Good memories. <laughs> a uh, lot of yeah. laughs, definitely. Yeah, he was always like laughing, poking fun at things. Even in mm. the hospital, like he was having a good time, like, and all the nurses loved him. Like, it was weird. I heard stories. <laughs> 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 what which ones there's a bunch of different stories from there well, like every everywhere he went there's stories well he would well he would brag a lot that he would go into the hospital and the nurses would just be around him oh yeah they, they, which you were witness to that <laughs> no i like it wasn't like him trying to be like all bad as oh yeah these are like no for some reason nurses loved him it was weird <laughs> like they would fall in love with him and like want to be by him and want to mm. like talk to him all night like for no reason like <laughs> instead of being at the station they would want to chill with him and talk like <laughs> like dad don't you have a job don't you have paperwork or something <laughs> it cracked me up because i think he would purposely tell me stuff like that just to make me mad and i'd yeah. be like i'm like a little teddy bear <laughs> <laughs> i was like shut up you're an idiot <laughs> <laughs> I and I always saying, ah, oh, man, he was funny. No, like, I remember um, he had wound care, like, here in, in, the, in the apartments once, and there was this one nurse that was, like, fell for him. She was married and everything, and she had, like, a cop, um, a oh. cop husband, but, like. We're not going to say names. <laughs> yeah, we're not going to say names, but she would, she was, like, in love with him, and, like, she would bring him donuts, she would get jealous, like. She would get crazy jealous over other nurses, like because um, <laughs> Luis talked about this other nurse at the um, the surgeon that was seeing him to fix up the wound that he had, and then um, there was a nurse over there that was all flirty with him, and Luis told this nurse about it, and she called that that um, surgeon's office and wanted to talk to the nurse and talk shit to them to tell them some bullshit, like that they were fucking up his, like, hair on his wound when they covered it up or something. Yeah. And, like, she wanted to talk. She talked mad shit to them, said that they were <laughs> inefficient, like, not able to do their jobs right. And then, yeah, the other nurse said, like, tell her to come over here and I'll kick her ass. Like, tell her to come <laughs> over here. Well, not kick her ass, but, like, she'll see what's up. Like, <laughs> she went hard for him. <laughs> damn. Oh, yeah. Like, I was like, damn, girl, come down. <laughs> Yeah, telling him she wanted, like, straight up wanted an amante, like, wanted a oh. lot, like, yeah, it was, it was interesting. <laughs> Levantaba pasiones. <laughs> Chichaparro. <laughs> oh, yeah. Where was I in all of this? In my own little world? What the fuck? <laughs> no, I don't think, um, was that, I don't think you were there at the time no nah i don't think you guys were like seeing each other yet no we were oh you were because y'all were all, all, were already living over at the west side oh, okay then yeah. yeah like he would tell me these stories but truth be told i think he would just he would say things like that just to spark a reaction yeah. and for him to get his shits and giggles but i never took it with ill intent never took it yeah, yeah. I mean. always laughed it off <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he got to you, right? Like, hmm? Yeah. I mean, that's what he wanted. Just yeah. everyone to be loud. Like, yeah. <laughs> just like, fuck it, just blow it over. It's funny. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely good memories. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. What about any other memories you remember? Oh, man. 
I just think the the time that we spent together, it was mostly just a lot of him giving advice. That's what I remember him most by. Yeah. You know, him sitting down and just talking, how you doing, da da da. You know, like a friend. That's what I remember it mostly. Yeah, it was a really good. He was really good to talk to. Like all joking aside, like you could spend hours with him just talking. Yeah. Uh, a couple times, I would, you know, I would kind of catch myself like we were just sitting there next to each other outside, like you know, in the balcony, and like ten, fifteen minutes, twenty minutes passed by, and either of us wouldn't say a word. I yeah. don't know. Why. He would always. I don't know. He would be always in this very uh, meditative kind of contemplative state. Oh yeah. Yeah. So oh, yeah, he was a very contemplative person. Yeah, I remember that too. We would chill for a lot of time, like even go like especially outside. Like he loved being outside and chilling on the balcony or chilling out in like a little like backyard. Just like being in the air and yeah. like you said, he would get into this kind of meditative state and he yeah. liked other people to be around him too. Like you didn't have to talk, but like just kind of be together in that kind of contemplative state, I guess. Yeah. So I would always ask him, what are you thinking about? Nothing. I'm like, well, damn. <laughs> <laughs> We're just sitting here. But I always knew there was always something. I guess, you know, in his, you know, genius of a mind, he was always observing something. Oh, yeah. I guess picking at things. So. Yeah, and he, he really did observe a lot. Like, he, he loved looking at the heavens, trying to understand, like, the planet, space, relativity, yeah. like, all, like forms of mathematics yeah. anthropology like chicano studies like history like yeah. you would just study a lot yeah so yeah and um and he was always like surprised at that because he always thought he was he was like just a like when he was growing up like just a gangster or whatever or like that's how he said that like he got molded into that like he chose like in high school like he chose to become that and that's how he got like molded in a way that he was just the cholo or whatever but then one day he got woken up by like a friend like in um well first in canada some like indigenous part like he was hanging out with some indigenous people and this um this guy came up to him and was like yo so um what tribe are you from and he's like oh i'm not native man i'm just um I'm Latino, and then the guy, like, looks at his skin and looks at Luis and, like, huh, funny, you look more like me. And, then, like, Luis thought, I kept on thinking about that. And, like, and then I guess just things happened in people's lives, you know, that were, like, the universe wants you to go in a certain direction. And yeah. so he met this other friend who was really into a Chicano, like, just, like, the movement, Chicano, like, power and everything. Yeah. And so he learned from them, like, um, I guess more of a people. And it, uh, beginning getting more of a brown pride i guess and pride of himself and indigenous pride and started seeing himself more connected with like the natives and understanding that now he wasn't just spanish like he had a lot of native and he was really um proud to be mexican he started becoming really proud to be mexican i think right. that's always what he was he's really proud to be indigenous indigenous and brown and he would always say like little people are more smarter than like <laughs> the would. taller people he would <laughs> I mean, there might be some sense to that. I mean, I still have the same brain. Like, you know, the, you still have the same brain mass, but, like, you have more room to... You don't have um, all that mass to <laughs> concentrate on. You know, you can concentrate <laughs> on other things instead of trying to keep your body, like, all right. Fed. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's what he told me one time. <laughs> so, like, because it takes up, I guess, little people don't need to eat as much. <laughs> I was like, what the fuck? He's like, yeah, well, to keep your body going, you need to feed it more. And I'm like, okay, to keep it up. I'm like, all right, you're smarter. I got it. You're smarter. Okay. <laughs> oh, yeah, that was something he was really proud of, though, was his intelligence, mm -hmm. and he'd always try to kind of rub it in your face. <laughs> <laughs> Just so you know, in this room, I'm the smartest one. <laughs> yeah, it was very kind of like, yeah. he was like a Mexican Sheldon, basically, <laughs> if you want to think about that. <laughs> there you go like very smart and very kind of pompous but you hit the nail on the head with that <laughs> hell yeah but unlike shaolin he was a little more caring and um and he did like booties like <laughs> he was a little <laughs> just you know he wasn't as asexual as shaolin yeah <laughs> 
He likes the padanka dance. <laughs> <laughs> then I'm going to that Acacia Park. <laughs> oh, yeah. you. Some of those chicks were crazy, though. I mean, basically like dongs at the swimming pool. Like, come on, girls. We're like, toddlers and <laughs> preschoolers. Like, what the fuck? But we're caring for our kids. We're good mothers. Oh, shit. Good single mothers. <laughs> <laughs> we're trying to get another brother. All right? <laughs> But no, he really did like them Nalgonas. So. <laughs> Shout out to all the Nalgonas that kept Luis happy throughout yeah. the years. <laughs> you guys made his day on Hell his darkest, yeah. his, his darkest moments. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, so we would joke around. But like we say, it's all in good fun. Because he would fuck fun of himself, too. Like, yeah. He was no stranger. Everyone got a dose of his... Um, of his comedy. Yeah. <laughs> Freaking Luis. Damn. Oh, yeah. No, he should have been a comedian, though. He was pretty funny. Like, he would set up stories and everything. Like, set it up, too. And <laughs> it was actually, it was interesting to hear. You know, when most people tell stories, it's kind of boring. Like, yeah. to be honest, like, a lot of people don't. There's just certain people that can tell a story. Yeah. And he was one of them. Yeah, he definitely was. <laughs> oh, yeah. And he had hundreds. Like, I would never, like, like I said, I could just listen Sometimes it was like hours of just hearing his stories, like him talk. It was cool. Yeah. And I think that's how, I guess, we, we kind of bonded more. I remember we would have like conversations up to like three in the morning. Oh, yeah. When we barely started meeting each other up to like, yeah, a couple of hours, either over the phone or we would be outside his house chilling and just talking. And yeah. I always wondered his mom was going to come out in a minute and be like, yeah, que se vaya a su casa esta niña. <laughs> <laughs> no they were used to it because he with every person like he formed a bond with he would be like that you you'd spend hours with him and like you look at the time and you're like oh shit like it's already this time mm. like you'd forget just because mm. like either you were in like you said you would either be talking or listening to his stories or in that contemplative like silence with him and so yeah he was a very special guy and i'm I really miss him i really like Definitely. It is weird not having him here, you know, like, yeah, you just expect me to come home and hear him say, like, yeah, Yo, or what, this bitch, or like, you know, like, this <laughs> voice, like, can't wait. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, it was funny, like, like, so I wouldn't, I wouldn't make a, because I would cook, do the cooking, and every time I would serve him, and she's like, oh, what would you say, like, thanks, bitch, or whatever, yeah. or like, you would, you know, you had to be like, kind of rude about it but that was just his way mm. and it was hilarious yeah he was definitely a lovable person i just think it was uh i don't know awkward for him to express emotion at at, at moments yeah and uh but not saying that he didn't have feelings but i think uh he always you know always kept to himself certain certain emotions he was very reserved but um in all i think in his advice and you know uh you know whatever words of wisdom that he would share with you it was all with the intent of you know trying to make you a better person yeah he was all about that that every day you should try like a little bit just a little bit like to get better at something and that like takes years like how many years like you've been doing it? he would always say as many years as it took you to have that problem in your life it's gonna take that many years to like to fix and it, and it's true but it's just every day he had to just get a little bit better and see yeah. like what did i do better and he was all about self-improvement he was always self-improving like there was not a day like he didn't try to improve himself either with his um with mathematics or with his studies mm. or with learning how to do the piano or yeah like or with a bunch of stuff he always had some hobby he would focus on and just try to get better at too like he did a lot like he was he was pretty good on he was getting pretty good on those pianos too like he could um from ear he could play like certain cumbia sounds and stuff it's yeah. cool his uh what was it he liked temerarios a lot oh hell yeah <laughs> did he ever play and sing to you <laughs> would he serenade you at times <laughs> sweet serenade well he wouldn't he wouldn't he wouldn't bless me with the with the sweet serenade but i'm sure he would reserve that to you yeah. his, his wonderful voice yeah i was like i don't like temerarios you're gonna listen to it cabrona <laughs> 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 yeah he loves singing 
I mean, he wasn't like maybe the best singer. But I mean, but yeah. he could keep a tune. But he was, he would just go loud. He didn't give a fuck. Like even if mm-hmm. singing wrong notes or anything, you would just like go all for it. It was cool. <laughs> it was funny. Yeah. Like and his grandma, like when he would hang out with his grandma, she would always get him to sing too. Because like even if he's not the best singer, she knew like he loved to have a good time and yeah. would, was the best singer. Just. Maybe not like technically the best, but just had the most fun with it. Yeah. No innovations whatsoever. I don't know. It was badass. <laughs> Very outgoing. Hell yeah. I remember singing uh, Return of the Mac at a karaoke night with him. Really? For- Return of the Mac? For real? Return of the Mac. No, he's, I just sung like the backup vocals and he did all the rap and everything. <laughs> and the crowd loved it. They were so into it because he would get all into it. I think his energy was just very contagious. Oh, yeah. Like, he collided, like, whatever mood he was in, that's the mood, like, the room was going to be in. Oh. You know? (laughs) Yeah. So, it was cool. Like, he had a a real power. Like, he was more of a healthy person. I mean, he would have been probably, like, a president or something or, like, a revolution, probably a revolutionary leader, like, or something. Like I think of him as the brain. You know, he was plotting to take over the world. <laughs> oh, yeah, mo- most likely. Yeah. <laughs> we just didn't know what his plan was. Yeah, yeah. He was just getting his pawns in order. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> no, because, like, he was, he was really intelligent. And at one point, I think he did. Honestly, I think he was looking towards that. Like, that's why he kind of had a break up with the movement people because they were so passive and they just wanted to continue, like, doing the um, Tibet dance, like, marches that mean nothing like you have police escorting these marches and they're not doing anything it's the same shit there's no real movement like, like revolutionary in, yeah uh, he wanted, change thought yeah yeah he wanted things to be like a little more drag more um just pick up the pace because obviously whatever's happening in these movements they're not doing anything and they're also fighting for stupid causes like he was pissed that they were fighting for the lincoln center and central like because they wanted to tear down the Lincoln Center because so they could build a better freeway to for the Wattis Pass. But these activists chained themselves up to it because it was the first, um, like the first Mexican American congressman or something like that went to. Well, it was a fort way before. Uh, then little by little, it kind of became like a school. Yeah. For um, the well, yeah, uh, Mexican American children, mostly Mexican children, because yeah, back then. Um, there really weren't any borders, but um, yeah, I mean, I guess. Yeah, but it's just like he said, it's just a building, like a cockroach-infested building that's <laughs> doing nothing. <laughs> like, yeah, like, and even if um, this guy did go to that school, like, he would always say, like, if this guy was a congressman, there's no way he was for the people. He was like, if he was the first one, he was like, pro- like an Uncle Tom type of guy, like, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> like you know what I mean, yeah. like. There's no re- this building's not doing anything for the people. It has no real like value to the people. It's just there. Like, go ahead and tear it down. There's other. It'll fix a big issue in our city. Like I said, <laughs> there's other issues in our city. Like, what about our people? People are hungry. People are there. Like, trying to cross over. Like, there's more important issues that we need to focus on. Not these stupid little distractions, little events that people create just so that they could get in the paper. Yeah. Well, I mean, we could definitely get more involved. I guess as a community, all of us, to yeah. try to improve. Um, but yeah, is I think conversations with with him weren't very much limited to just uh, pop culture, but a lot of things that you know that should be of interest to us nowadays. Instead of worrying about you know Kim Kardashian and <laughs> Kanye West and their fucking drama. <laughs> yeah, he hated like pop culture mm-hmm. and stupid shit like that. Yeah. And I guess that's why he started kind of wanted to start the podcast because he just wanted to to get people to know what was happening in El Paso and to see that you could be more than just a like yeah. working at a grocery store or something or just like simple that there's a lot more to it and there's people here that are um, doing more and like trying to be something different and that's what he wanted people to see. Give people a voice and I think he 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 wanted i guess for people to in a sense appreciate more of of the culture that that we surround ourselves in um so i guess that's the best way that i can remember him oh yeah 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 just yeah and with that he wanted people to like really love life he would always be so surprised 
that people were so unhappy. Everyone was so unhappy, so sad, so angry. Me, even me, like some days, like I was so fucking pissed for no reason. So <laughs> sad and angry for no reason. It's like, what the fuck? Like, look at me. Like, I'm this little guy. I'm, I'm kidney failure. Like, yeah. I can't see. Um, I had scoliosis. Like, he's he was kind of like disabled in a lot of ways. And he was happy. He was really like, I've never seen a person that was genuinely happy. I think that's what's more admirable about him, his strength. Because he always wanted to be the strongest for everybody else. It, yeah. Yeah. It was amazing. And, I mean, he was really inspirational. Like, he was a really, really great guy. Yeah. And there's one story I've been wanting to, like, share with people that you'd always told me that always stuck with me. It's, it's like, something that, um, about, like, in, like, Mexican culture, there's a, that, well, it's not a god, it's a force, which Lilopochtli. And he would always explain it properly because everyone thinks about it from what you hear in the books. That's the Aztec god of war that wanted the Aztecs to murder everyone so they for the blood and mm. for their hearts and stuff and yada, yada, yada. He's like, nah, that's none of that. It's the force of the heart. It's the hummingbird on the left, your heart, the heartbeat, that willpower that gets you to do something. Mm. And th- he said that's what got the Aztecs to go from Atslan, from where they were at, to find a place and become the greatest one of the greatest civilizations i've ever been on the planet yeah and he wanted people to understand that because the that which little pochli that will that discipline is what should be driving you forward and that you should always try to feel it and see and always have that focus that your which little pochli should always have a focus of where where it wants to be and that you should always be driving to that and that'll like your life force like what keeps you alive and he had a lot of that like a lot of willpower i mean if if we put in perspective just seeing with whatever you know physical ailments his you know his illness he had very much a willpower to just keep creating and keep keep moving just you know an example this podcast how many people actually have that willpower that confidence you know to to you know say you know what i want to do this and I, i'm i'm having a vision and i want to drive it forward exactly so i i definitely think that's a lot of the the things that we take away from him um and his family i i I think they very much saw that in him that he didn't need much how to explain advice or assistance in in anything because he was very much an independent person despite the fact that he that that he had you know these ailments it's it's and it's amazing to see that nowadays you know some of us for one little thing we 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 let that set us back and hold us back and i think he gives us all a good example of you know no it's 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 inside you that willpower whatever else you know on the outside you can you can control that and and make that your driving force so oh yeah so uh hopefully I hope everyone takes a lesson from Luis and the wonderful life that he had. And well, I still have because if you believe in quantum physics, he's everywhere and and anywhere at once and yeah. anytime. So um, he's still here with us and he, he's an amazing person. And I hope um, we all can look back at it and try to draw that strength. Yeah. So thank you, Evelyn, for coming today. Oh, thank you. I appreciate it. Um, I think the best way that we can remember him is just remembering all of that, that we lived with him because he wouldn't have wanted for us to remember him, you know, or whatever hardship he was going through. He would have wanted to make an impact and definitely be an influence in other people's lives. And um, we definitely appreciate it and we don't take it for granted. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Luis. We love you. And um, everyone, if we could just have um, 30 seconds of silence for Luis. Um, So um, I guess we'll start right now.
thank you. Awesome. And, <laughs> and again, thank you, Evelyn. And um, thank you, Luis. And we love you. And we'll always keep you in your in our hearts. And you've taught us much, and you're still teaching us. And you're one of the best. We really lost someone great. And thank you. Definitely, a big hug from here to heaven. Oh yeah. <laughs>